Okay, here we are at Possum Woods Puppets, my little workshop. We're going to make a puppet today. And we're going to start without a pattern. We're actually going to make our own head pattern. I have some patterns for bodies and that. But we're going to make our own head pattern. I got my all these recyclable bag. I'm going to recycle it right now into a head pattern. Decent, good scissors, bad scissors. Flatten this bag out here. Now when I make a puppet head pattern, I generally will start with the mouth. And that is certainly what we're going to do today. I start with a simple mouth pattern. And then the head pattern is made off of that, actually. Now, I use grocery bags. If I have them, you can use any craft paper, really. Um, you could use notebook paper. If you use notebook paper, you're going to definitely want to glue it onto something stronger after you make your pattern. bag flattened out. Get myself a nice piece of probably about eight inches by eight inches. That's eight inches there, so I'll work with that. Make a mouth. We'll make a nice square piece to start with. Got my square of craft paper. I'm going to do now is I'm going to fold it in half. Crease that. That'll give me a mouth. <laughs> okay, not much of a mouth unless you want a square head puppet. You can, at this point, draw your basic mouth shape. But it's not always going to be symmetrical when you do that. The simplest mouth shape would just be to trace a circle and fold the circle in half, whatever size circle you wanted. You're going to find out my pattern basically becomes circle-ish. Right, I got this folded up. I'm going to fold this over. I want this edge here to line up really nice. Now this is the center of the mouth. I fold that over. Remember that is my center. What I'm going to do is I'm going to draw half a mouth, half a top of the mouth, and when I cut it out, I'll have two matching sides. And actually, two matching bottoms, which can be adjusted then if we wish. So I'll start with this. And I have to decide what kind of mouth do I want? What kind of puppet head do I want? If I want a real wide head, I'm going to want a real wide mouth. Now maybe I want the head kind of flat. With the head kind of flat, I'm going to make this side shorter. The shorter this side is, the flatter the front will be. The lo longer this side is, the wider the head will be. The longer this is, the rounder the head will be. I'm going for basically, I'm going to take my hand as kind of a guide, put my middle finger there. That tells me about my minimum. That's like my minimum for a mouthpiece if I want to get my hand in it. Uh, basically, it has to be, that's a minimum, but I'm going to go out further. I want a bigger, bigger, bigger mouth. And that is two and a half inches. Now come up here. I'm 
bring this down kind of like a, round it out. Round that out there. And that's going to give me a nice, nice mouthpiece. Okay, and my head's going to look like my head five inches wide. Get an idea. So I'm not going to a real monster here. Cut that out. This is scrap. Now, fold, open it up. There's the top of the mouth plate. Here's the bottom of the mouth plate. And you can see that that's basically a mouth. <laughs> One thing I need to do is right here where it's folded, that's the center. I'm going to mark that center point on the top and on the bottom. And where it was folded here. I'm going to temporarily mark that. This should be a mouth. I'm going to mark my centers. Okay. Um, if I want an overbite, if I want the top of the mouth to come out over the lip, I can. Here's my original fold, my original cut. They're all the same. Now, if I want to make, say, the bottom sm the smaller, here's my front still. I'm going to mark that just so we know. Top, front. So that's the top front. Now, if I wanted an overbite, which means the top of the mouth comes over, the chin's kind of recede, all I can do is fold this like this, and I'm only, I would only trim this. I could make this a little smaller, or bring this back. Then the top of the mouth would come over top. If I wanted an underbite, where the bottom teeth maybe stick out, then I would fold this over and just trim up here at the top. I'm going to leave these symmetrical. The other thing I want to do at this point is I am actually going to cut this in half. Because when I make my mouth, if I make my mouth plate like this, there's not much room for fat. Now this is just a pattern, but this was my mouth material, mouth plate material. If it's connected like this and hinged like hinged here, there's no room inside for material. So I'm going to be cutting this all in half. I have my top and my bottom, and like I said, if I wanted to make an overbite, I could trim the bottom a little shorter, a little smaller. Same at the top. When I actually put this together, and I'll be doing that later, I'll actually be leaving a gap between them. I'm putting a piece in in there that'll. No. But I now have my basic mouth plate. I need to make the head. Craft paper, my grocery bag. Now this is the key step right here. I'm going to start, I believe, with the top of the head. So I got my top mouth plate. With this puppet, top and bottom are the same. Okay, so I could use the top for both halves. This is my top mouth plate. I need to measure, need to measure from here to here. Here, this corner. All the way around. Let's 
center's at four. Uh, I gotta get this just right. I'm sure it's at four and eight. Four and eight is the center. So it's gonna be eight and a quarter around. So this is eight and a quarter inches. I'm gonna make a note. Eight one quarter inches. No arrows. So it's eight and a quarter inches around. Put that down my on my thing here. Okay. That is eight and a quarter inches. The reason that's important is when I make the head foam, the head foam is going to wrap around this. So now I need to measure eight and a quarter inches. Eight and a quarter. So this is the bottom of my head pattern. And this is a three piece head pattern. So you have two tops and one bottom, one chin. What it's going to do at this point is, let's get that middle here, four and an eighth, one, two, three, four, and an eighth. Four and an eighth, okay, perfect middle. not going to need probably much more than this. I'm not going to make too tall of a head. I'm going to, I mark the four and an eight. This would be the middle of the mouth. It wraps around. Fold this in half right on that line. So, this is one half of one half of the top piece. Now I need to figure out how, how I want my head. And this is going to be the face. This is going to be the front. This is going to be the face. Okay. Now. You can make this really any shape you want. I'm going to go for a very traditional circle-ish. Circle I'm not going with an absolutely round head. I could. I could go four and a quarters up here, four and eight, and make a round head puppet pattern. Real simple. I'm going to bring it up. taller head. I'm going to go a little higher here. Started to go here, but I'm going to go a little higher. I'm just rounding it out. Now, if I... The next step is I'm going to need a couple darts. I'm going to put a dart here at the top. I'll put a dart here on the side. And those darts, when they're glued together, will help to give me give the roundness to the head. You could add more darts. You could add bigger darts, little darts. Feel free to experiment. Okay, buy some cheap, cheap foam and you can experiment with different head shapes. But this is going to give me my basic head shape. 
I'm going to cut this out now. And keep this even. So I'm cutting around. Uh, cut out those darts. But for a basic round or oval, oval like oval shaped head, those those darts do it. That is actually three darts. That is a very basic head pattern. As I said, you can make it taller. If you notice here, when I put the darts together, we can see the basic shape of the head. Certainly I could put in a few more darts and <laughs> change the shape. It's going to be a nice roundish head. Top. This is the top. And I'll make two. So we'll make two of the top. The bottom has Fold our paper in half here. It's going to draw a straight line, a straight edge here. Cut that line off. It gives me a nice straight edge on the bottom. I'm just going to use my pattern as a pattern since I know I know the top and bottom of the mouth of this puppet are the same. If I had changed the shape of them, if the top and the bottom are not the same shape, then you'll need to measure this for the bottom and do as I did with the top piece to make sure you have the right length. You see here now, this does wrap around, meets in the center, wraps around. Okay, so with the bottom, and I'll use my pattern as a pattern. So I need to know, now I need to go right to here. By using the pattern, half, my half here, I got my width. Now the jaw, if you make a big jaw like this, you're going to have to be careful. Okay, you make a big jaw like this, you have to be careful that that jaw isn't hitting the neck, hitting the body when you operate the mouth. So you generally don't want quite that big. That's something you can experiment with though if you want a really big jaw. Come up that line right there. Around. That's still going to be a pretty big jaw. And I'll put a dart here. Dart here. You know, I'm going to make this just a little smaller. I'm going to bring that in just a little bit. So I have to finish at the same point. Okay, that dart's going to be fine. Okay, the dart's going to have to be really big on the mouth. On, on the chin, I should say. Cut this out. Cut out my darts. This is my chin. Mark that chin. Make one. So now I have everything I need to make a puppet head, pattern wise.
here we are. We've got our pattern cut out. Head pattern, chin pattern. Don't need those at the moment. We're going to start with the mouth. A nice strong mouth. This is foam core board. It's paper. It's got foam in the middle. It's used for signs, uh, science fair displays. You can get this at Staples, Walmart, lots of places. I like this for mouth plates. You can also use plastic corrugated sign up. Uh, they use for sign boards. Some people use stiff cardboard. I don't like cardboard. Cardboard will wear out quickly. Um, I do like this. The next step is to draw my patterns on the board. Get this right flush with the bottom. That gives me a, oh, I got a straight bottom line. What do you know? Trace my pattern. Here we go. You need to mark that center. I'll mark that center. Okay, my top and the bottom are the same. This would be the bottom if they were different. It's going to be the bottom anyways. But and the top, right along that edge. A nice flat edge there. This should be the top. Oops, got to mark that center. That comes in real handy when you start putting the foam on the puppet, lining it up to the mouth. There we go, mark that center. Um, you can use scissors. I got this nice little razor blade here. We use this razor blade. So I'm going to come around. I'm not going real deep yet. This will actually become the guideline. What do I want to do? Now I try to cut deeper. That first little groove I make helps me keep lined up. So I don't go real deep the first time. Second time, cutting down to the bottom. There's the top. Okay, some people I've seen cut these out of thin plywood, like a thin birch you would use in model airplanes, remote control airplane building. If you, if you want, you could build it out of plywood. Or, or, and then, of course, you need to use a saw, and probably sand the edges. Depends on what you're building, who you're building it for, how long you want to last. This, I, this lasts. This will last forever. But the plywood is a choice, as is the corrugated plastic. You can also use storage bin lids, or coffee can lids. Adam Schutinger, he cuts his mouth plates out of uh, coffee bin lids. <coughs> Not coffee bin, um, storage bin lids. Now, when I put this mouthpiece together, I'm going to want a gap in here. This gap allows me to put fabric on the inside of the mouth and it's still bent. I'm just going to lay my ruler right here. Oh. Probably about a pencil width. It's about a pencil width from the edge of the board to the ruler. Just cut right along there.
take this piece, measure it with the mouth, it's flush on this end, right about my mouth together, it's going to be three pieces, and that little piece in the middle is going to give me, when it's closed, I'll be able to have room inside the mouth for the fabric. I'll turn these over, it doesn't really make a difference, they're identical on both sides. Now for this next step, you can use duct tape, the old silver duct tape, or it comes in lots of different colors. This is gaffer's tape, this is gaff on the inside. You need a piece about the size of the mouth. This does not tear as easy as duct tape, which is why I use it actually, because it's stronger tape. Right down flat. This is the inside of my mouth. And now you notice I have room in here, I put some fabric. Still got lots of room. The next step is the back side. Okay, this will be the inside of the mouth. This will be the part that's inside the puppet. And I see about this little hinge too. You notice I got a little play. I'll put my mouth together. I'll be able to have a little play. If you lay this flat and then tape this side, it's not going to want to bend. You notice like this side does not want to bend. It wants to bend this way. So what you got to do is close the mouth before you put the tape on. Same size here again. I'll lay that down. Close this mouth. Whoops! I dropped this mouth first. Close the mouth. Lay that there. Fold this up. To the other side, so fold it up. Now, my mouth can open and close. Stay open. Ah, likes to fall too. Does like to fall. There we go. Got a nice little mouth plate. Get that flush and flat back there. Trim off this extra tape. So that's looking good there. Get a little tape and go trim off down here. That's nice and flush. Again, we'll mark the center. I know I'm a little off. Muscle that a little bit. There we go. The reason I marked down the edge is I'm going to put cloth <laughs> on this. So I need to cover that up. There we go. 
There we go. That's looking good now. I got it nice and worked out. With the inside of the mouth last. Do I need to do the outside of the mouth? Go <laughs> ahead. Inside of the puppet head. What I like to do, I could put elastic or thumb finger tubes right directly on. Yes, but I don't like to do that. I like to cover this with cloth. It's going to make it a little stronger. Don't need the tape. Get that out of the way. Off just a little bigger. Now, this is this is trouser pants. This is trouser pant cloth. When I buy pants, because I'm not the tallest person in the world, they hem the pants, <laughs> and I get a big piece of extra cloth, and I I, I use that. You can use t-shirt. You could use. Really, any cloth you have around the house, any spare old cloth, an old piece of dress shirt, blue jeans, a lot of times I use old jeans, I use the denim from those. Now I'm going to attach this. I'm going to use some spray on glue, spray on adhesive. Shake that up good. Got to shake it, shake it, shake it, shake it. Whoa. This does not want to go where I want to go. <clears throat> Spraying a little wild today, so we'll go ahead and get down some paper. And I'm doing this. It's going to be on this side, not the inside of the mouth, the inside of the head. So let's get that sprayed down. Now I'm actually going to get my hair on low, dry this up a little bit. It's contact cement. This, this spray adhesive is a contact cement. And the contact cements. They always work best to get a little dry, a little tacky first. So we're going to be doing that. Hair dryer is a great way to speed up the process. If you don't want to use a hair dryer, you can just let it sit and wait. About 10 minutes of resting time, we'll, we'll do the same thing. Now. Again, we don't want to lay this flat. Well, that flat, we're going to, it's going to bind. So you need to, need to have it closed. Put that right there. Fold this up. Fold this over. Now this is going to add a lot of strength to this puppet mouth now. I got the gaffer's tape, which is already pretty strong. Let's take it one step further with the cloth. Trim away the edges. This part will be inside the head, so worry about being perfect, don't.
using old scissors for this. Because <laughs> there's a lot of glue and I don't want to get glue on my good scissors. I actually have three pairs of scissors I'm using right now. This pair, which is my rough pair. They're old, they're kind of wore out. So I use those on foam, I use those on gluey pieces, sticky pieces. Got another pair, I've been using them cloth, or just cloth. Now I have a very expensive pair of sewing scissors I use on cloth. Now I generally use the expensive pair just on my fleece. They are very expensive. But it's good to have good tools. See, so it's not perfect, perfect. It doesn't need to be. It's going to be inside the head. It's good. Next step. I'm going to go ahead and put, all, put my material inside the mouth. Red foam. There, here we go. Red fleece. Okay, so this is a nice red fleece. It's Echo 5 Plus, 9 by 12. Alright. Joy and Fabrics. You can buy bigger pieces of felt. It's just red felt. And this is going to go inside the mouth. It's going to be the inside of the mouth. These are the ones I use on cloth, but not glue. Save this piece. I can use that on another puppet for a tongue. I'm using red felt for the inside of the mouth. You can use black, you can use pink, you can use any color you want actually. So if I do a black mouth, this will make nice tongue material. I'm going to save that. Save as much as you can. That's my philosophy. Get this shook up. 3M high strength 90, some good stuff. that on there. I also have some Elmer's Craft Bond. You can use Elmer's Craft Bond. So this was the 3M90. Let's make sure, get, sure I get a good camera shot. It's a lot different, really. You can use. Try this a little bit. And you're going to notice I'm actually only putting it on the mouth plate. I didn't put any on the felt. I don't want to float through the float through the felt. This I can lay flat because this closes. So let that flat press, and that glue will hold just fine. And now, notice I can still shut it. This piece has to be wrapped on when the mouth is closed. The mouth inside of the mouth, you put on when the mouth is open. And then you get this. you got a nice puppet mouth here. And again, we can trim away the extra. Real careful here. Just trim that 
nice and around. And that gone. Now I'll put in teeth and tongue later. Got a little bit of shadow here. The next step is how am I going to control this that's inside the head? And my answer, what I like is finger tubes. I like finger tubes. Um, you can't. You can, and a lot of people do this. You know, take a piece of the elastic. I'm just going to throw it to my elastic right on hand here. I'm sure I do. Hmm. Of course, I never have it when I want, right? I have a whole big roll. Right where I not. Huh. Is that it? There it is. Here we go. Got some elastic here. What you do is you just lay that right across the mouthpiece. Um, if you're using wooden plates, rivets are a great way to hold something like this down and hold that right on that plate. And the fingers go right underneath. Right in there. It stretches. Make a little tight. Stretch. So you can put that down. But I'm not going to use elastic. I really like using finger tubes. I like the control they give me. Gonna make finger tubes. For this, I'll use one half inch foam. And a razor blade. I don't like to change this blade all the time, so I'm not using this one. I make that blade last longer if I don't use it on foam. Foam destroys razor blades. They're cheap. So it works out. Okay, I'm going to look on my tube about yay deep. Inches wise, that's two inches. I know from experience I need about four inches. Go ahead and do it down to five. So for now that's five by two. Take the razor blade, cut this nice and square. Yeah, you will go through a lot of razor blades. That's why you do not use your good scissors on foam. It will dull them and ruin them so quick. These are my cheap, crappy scissors. I got glue all over them. They're not long before they're discarded. Well, not cheap, cheap. They are a nice, uh, yeah, that good brand. Fisca. They're, they're Fiskas. I wrap this around my thumb. Take off just a little bit. So that's going to make a nice. That's a little tight for my thumb now. Just a little tight. It's good for my finger. So, for my finger tube. 
I have, as expected, four inches by two inches. And it looks like I can get one more right off that thin spot. So these will be my finger tubes. And my thumb tube is going to be just a little bit bigger. About four and a half. So the five I know is, is too big. Four and a half. So for my finger and thumb, it's a pretty average, a little bit small, so we're good for a female size. <laughs> Not that small. Big female. About four and a half for the thumb and five, four for the finger tubes. Put my razor blade up. Get out my barge cement. You could also use hot glue. You could use a spray adhesive for this. I'm going to be using the barge. And on the short ends, I'm going to put on a light bit of glue. Light bit of contact cement. Put that over. Put some cement off of there. You actually don't want this too thick. And one more. So basically put the contact cement on the ends of all three pieces. I'm going to give it a little shot with the hair dryer. A little off camera. You don't want to blow stuff off the table, but it's a little blow. Or just wait 10 minutes. Set it down and wait 10 minutes. And I'm going to join these ends. Pinch that together really, really good. Pinch those together. And that will hold. Trust me, if you were to pull on this to tear it, it won't tear on the seam, it'll tear away from the seam. That seam with that contact cement is the strongest part of that whole tube. It's like when you work with wood glue and if there are pieces of wood, the wood glue joint's always stronger than the wood. So it doesn't split on the glue joint. <laughs> there we go. Got my finger tube. Got my thumb tube. Other finger tube. Pinch that real good there. And just go onto the mouth plate. Okay, my top and bottom are the same, so it's not a big deal. <laughs> it's symmetrical. Otherwise, we'll make sure which end is the top and bottom. If you had the overbite, you know, I make sure the short end would be the bottom. Thumb tube would go on the bottom. Again, the contact cement. What I like to use with foam. A little bit here on the tube, thumb tube. And a little bit on the bottom where it's going to attach. A little bit on the top of the plate where I'm going to put the finger tubes. And I'm gluing again actually on the seam on these. So I'm gluing around the seam, strip about, oh, three quarters of an inch wide. Then with the finger tubes, I'll do one more thing. I'm going to put some glue right here on, the, on one side. And this, and on one side of the other one, and I'm actually going to be gluing the finger tubes to each other. And in fact, we can start with that. Two finger tubes, got glue on the side. Give it a little shot. I know I'm off. This blows everything around the table, so I go off, off camera.
forgive me for going off camera, but it allows me not to blow everything all over the table. And these will now stick together. We'll go ahead and shoot this. We're going to take this off. I know, off camera. And my thumb tip. Thumb tip. Thumb tube. Put it around my thumb. These right on my fingers. Now with finger tubes, what happens is the middle finger goes on top. This, this allows me to put these right where I want them on the plate. These are, the alignment is perfect now. Get this right where I want them. So I've got the two on the top and they're glued together and glued down. Got the, the thumb tube on the bottom. It's glued down. You notice right there, you notice, if you look at that, hey, that thumb's look a little bit off-center, just a little bit off-center. Because that's a natural position for my hand, and anyone's hand, really. So these are nice, those are good on there. i got lots of control. Lots of lots of control here. I like that. And now, I'm going to do one more thing. I have some old fleece here, just scrap fleece. I'm going to lay this over the top, here and here. Now let's use the Elmer's this time. We haven't used the Elmer's. Just because I can. Shaky, shaky, shaky. Now I don't want glue here. I do want it on the tops. A little bit on the front, why not? And wrap that around. square edge here, get that about center, you see that, that's about centered, push that down in, wrap that around, you know what, I'm going to cut me a straight edge with this. flush on where my thumb goes into the tube. Wrap that around and wrap it around the front there. And fold this over here. So I glued those parts. Trim off all this extra here. And again, this will be inside the head. So it doesn't have to be perfect. So obviously it's not perfect here, but it's pretty nice. But what this does, get my thumbs in, my fingers in, back in. Gives a little more strength to the foam. Nice resting spot for my finger up top. It's resting on cloth now, not on foam. Not that it matters. And there's my mouth plate. All ready for the puppet. Here from this side you can see it better. I'm not left-handed. There we go. 
Yeah. Fits right in there. That's a nice permanent plate. Got lots of control with those tubes. I like that's why I like the tubes. I think the tubes give me a lot of control. And they're easy to find with my fingers. Next step. We have our head and our chin patterns. I'm going to pull, stop, make a separate segment for this. There we go. We're now going to work on the head. It's going, this is moving. All right, got to make sure it's recording. Never know for sure. Nothing worse than recording a video and then it didn't record. Because it can make the whole puppet all over again. <laughs> Unlike maybe the lectures of that, where you can just edit, when you're making a craft, that camera messes up, the whole project has to be done all over again. That is frustrating. Okay, what we're going to have here, we're going to work on our head. The top head pattern, we're going to do two of these. I'm lining this up with the flush part of the foam. This is half inch foam. If you go to puppetbuildingworld.com, on our resources page, there's a link. You can get this very, probably the best price I've found is on Amazon. No surprise. Alright, then. Put a couple pins to hold that where I want it. This is the head pattern we made. Now, we have our puppet head. The three-piece puppet head. Ah, let's see if I can move this camera at all. Hi, here I am. And here's my three-piece head right there. Look at him. There he is. Look at that. That is beautiful. Boy, I'm a puppet head. There he is. It's great. Hand goes right in there. He fits real nice. Okay, I know some people have better camera production than me. I do the best I can. But here's our head. And we've got our eyes and ears and hair. And you notice it's not perfectly round. I didn't if you want a perfectly round head, you could do a round head pattern. Okay. It's the same technique. And you'd basically maybe use a compass or trace a coffee can lid to make your circle. Mine's a little higher, a little wider. It's not now let's say you want a taller head. Let's say you want someone like Bert. Okay, like Bert and Ernie, Bert. What you do is make that, you could add another inch or two down here on your pattern. Yeah, try to get a good angle. There we go. So if you was, when you was making your paper pattern, you'd make the side, you'd make it, just make it taller. You could get a taller head. So you want a taller head. You want a shorter head, you could make it shorter. With a taller head, you might want to add a couple more darts, add a little more character. More darts will change the shape. You can play with that. I like this pattern. I like that. That's a nice muppety looking head. Not perfectly round, and good good shape to it. You know, you start putting eyes on him. Maybe a nose. Think of this guy. So you can really start, you know, well, hey, that's a cool character. Now he's really coming alive there. You could really see something with it. I could see something with this guy. I like that. <clears throat> if you're looking for more of a human head shape, what you might want to do is make this is. 
this is really wide. This is wide. So if you want a human head shape, maybe make this narrower. Take a half inch off each end so it would be narrower and taller. You could do that. You can adjust this. You can adjust this pattern any way you want. This pattern gave me this. So I see this. Like, well, I can make a whole new pattern. I can actually take this pattern, trace it, and then start making adjustments, cut out a new pattern, and see how those work. This guy's nice and round. This is looking good. The next step will be to cut out these again. But this time we'll add, cut them out in my cloth. Two for the top, one for the bottom. And when I trace these on the fleece, I'm actually going to leave an extra, an extra half inch here and an extra half inch there. And that half inch extra will fold over the foam. It's half inch foam. So I want my, I'm going to want my cloth to go here. But if it only goes to here, I got raw foam. So I'm going to, I'm going to, make, I'm going to make the bottom of this and the top of the chin a half inch longer and then when I put on my cloth covering that extra half inch will cover the foam real nice so the next step is to trace these on the fleece and of course as I mentioned put an extra half inch at the bottom I will then I'm going to sew them on the sewing machine. Throw it right on. It can be so, they can be sewn by hand. You have your cloth piece. You can sew it by hand. Or I'm actually going to sew it all together on the sewing machine. Slip it over. Do that extra half inch down in here. Back here. So you can do it either way. You could even cut these out and just glue them on. Knowing that this seam will have ears and hair and be pretty much covered up, so you got you could actually just glue the glue the, the, the your cloth covering on, cut your cloth covering out of this, just glue it right on, and cover the side seams with ears and hair. But we're not going to do that. We are going to make a nice cloth cover for the top and for the chin so we'll pause for now okay here we go I'm going to be cutting out the head patterns put on our puppet head I'm going to go ahead and do the neck now a lot of times the neck piece is done later I'm going to do it while I'm got my fleece out notice with the fleece right away this fleece is a stretch this way but not so much that way. On my neck, it's going to be nice and long. I want the stretch going across the short way of the neck, not the length. If, if it stretches the length of the neck, this won't stretch. Then you're going to end up with a stretchy neck. And over time, you could end up with a giraffe, as Drew Allison calls it. To measure for the neck piece, because the neck piece is going to come here and drape. Okay, I'm going to measure this, and I'm going to measure across here. I do not measure, oops, I'm sorry. I'm going to measure across the back of the head and across the inside of the mouth. I do not want to measure here. My tube is going to go from here to here and drop straight down. If you put the tube all the way around, then your tube is going to shoot out the back. It's not going to be normal. You want the tube to drop. So I'm going to measure here and here. Now I've already measured this when I made it. <laughs> so I know that that is eight and a quarter. And this, and this should be eight and a quarter. Let's see how close I am.
and eight and a quarter. <laughs> so that's our new vet measurement. Now I'm going to take this inside mouth measurement. My zero. That looks like five inches inside. Five inches inside. So eight and a quarter plus five is 13 and a quarter. So my entire neck piece needs to be 13 and a quarter. Of course, I'm folding it in half for sewing purposes. Let's see. I'll also check my fleece. That's going to be the inside. That's going to be the outside. So I want the, I want the inside. That's going to become the outside of my puppet on the inside of the fold. Because once I sew this, I'm turning the side out. I've got 13 and a quarter. Half 13 is 6.5, which is 4 eighths. And I've still got a quarter inch, half of a quarter inch is 1 eighth. So it's 5 eighths. So it's going to be 6 and 5 eighths inches. 6 and 5 eighths. Pretty exact. Measure twice, cut once. And we we'll measure one more time. Hmm. You know what? I'm going to fold this a little bit more. That just doesn't seem right. This this edge, this rolling is killing me. Let's do it one more time. Six and five eighths. Measure again.
straight edge here. Sometimes it just looks like things aren't running straight, even when they are. Put some pins in this thing. Now, you can. If you don't use a sewing machine, just cut this right here and hand stitch it. And that's how I used to do it before I got the sewing machine and taught myself to sew. So you just a simple whip stitch would be fine. Hand stitch it from inside out. I'm going to be sewing this out of the machine here in a few minutes. I'll go ahead and get rid of this extra I don't need. But I will be saving this. This is a nice, nice piece. Always remember, no stretch. Stretch. Keep that in mind. Keep the stretch in mind when you're when you're your fleece or any material, but particularly fleece. Okay, I got another piece of fleece here. It stretches this way. It doesn't stretch that way. It stretches this way. Now this is key. Listen close. We want our stretch to go across the face. Okay, not, not up and down, but across. And remember what I said earlier in the another video, I hope you saw. I'm going to leave about a half inch at the bottom. This half inch is what's going to fold over. The half inch at the bottom, I'm leaving here. And the half inch here is going to fold over. The lip. Now I'll do the same with the chin. Half inch, fold over the lip. Double check, my stretch is going the correct way. And my stretch is going the correct way. We're using the same pattern. That I used to make the head. I'm going to take this now. If you're hand stitching, make two of these, cut them out, stitch them together. Because I'm going to be using the machine. I'm going to fold it over. With a little bit of an edge there. Fold this over nice. Right there. Pin it. And I'll I'll be so out. I'll sew here, I'll sew here, I'll sew here, I'll sew here. Okay, I'll sew here, I sew here, I sew here, I sew here. And I'm making the headpiece. And then, once that part's sewn, then I can sew the darts either by hand or with the machine. A lot of times it's easier to sew those by hand.
I'm making ears with that. These will work for ears. Um, okay, so here's my headpiece. It needs sewn. My neck needs sewn. Okay, check my stretch again. I move this piece around. It looks kind of square, so I'm going to make sure I got my stretch. Here's my chin. Now the chin piece doesn't go around the back, does it? So for the chin piece, I can just sew it. I just make it so it goes right. Here. Just need one piece. It'll fit there fine. Again, remember I said I'm going to leave an extra half inch. Leave that extra half inch for the lip. And this piece, I don't even really need it. There's no sewing. I'm going to tell you a little secret. If you're draping fleece, then you don't want to machine sew it. If you have like different shapes, maybe cheeks build up, eyebrows build up, you're, you're draping the, fate, the, 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 the fleece. But for this type of puppet, I can sew it, slide it over. There's no front seam. There's no front seam. The, the two-piece head pattern does have a front seam on the foam. And if you tried to make your cloth that way for the cover, you'd have a seam right down the middle. With this, the seams are on the side and the top. Well, that's where the ears go, right on that seam. And the hair goes right on that seam. So, even, so when I put the cloth on, those seams will be covered. They'll have a nice seamless cover. It'll look so good because the seams... I'm going to cover with ears and hair. This piece is easy. Just cut that out. my strap. These are my nice scissors. These are gingers. I don't know if you can read that or not. These are gingers. Very, exp pretty expensive. Not Maybe not the most expensive pair you can buy. They're a very expensive pair. I take very good care of these. These are only used on cloth. <laughs> Never on foam or even paper. I'm going to turn the camera off. I'm going to sew these with the machine, then we'll come back and we'll put our head and our neck together. Okay, we're back again. And now, we've got our head. Blah, blah, blah. I went ahead and sewed the neck. So my neck tube. I don't know if I mentioned the neck tube thing, but I usually make them like 18 inches long. Which gives me plenty. Now, I've got to turn it right side out. And this will be my neck tube. When this goes on, it will actually go across the back and the front. So I'll lay flat on here. So I'm actually going to end up cutting a hole for the thumb as this goes across there. For now, we're going to worry about the head. I, I sewed the head piece, I sewed it on the machine, turn that 
right side out. Got the same seams on the head cloth as I have on the head of the puppet. I'm going to line these seams up. Now putting this on can be a pain, so if I go off camera for a second, excuse me. I'm going to try I can do it on camera. I want to line up this seam here. I'm going to put a little cap on him. It's a little tight, which is good. Because you don't want loose fleece. But remember, the fleece has a stretch, so that little bit of tightness is all right. Just try to stretch this on here. I got my hot glue gun, my glue gun warming up. Getting this stretched down. Get that little bit extra cover the lip. I'm most concerned with the front. Got my seams matched. Got a little extra there. There we go. So this is going to fit nice. That is going to fit really nice. This is just going to glue right down here. And then I'll finish stretching it around. I'll plan fit back here. And then these are I don't I don't know. I might I might use these eyes. I've had them laying around forever. But put the eyes on. And a nose. Some hair. Oh, a cute little puppet. I might go with a smaller eye. Orange eyelids, orange nose. I mean, that'd be pretty, that'd be pretty cool. That'd be pretty cool there. I like that. Orange and orange. Keep dropping stuff. Trying to balance things <laughs> because they're not glued on yet or attached yet. All right, how's my glue gun coming? All right, I got some hot glue coming out of the hot glue gun. Okay. Now we're just gonna start gluing. I start with the mouth. When I'm gluing. We'll start that corner. Get that corner lined up. Coming right into the edge of the red belt. I'm going to go ahead and line up that other edge of the mouth. You got a loose piece of thread there. Do the rest of that top lip. That lip in there real nice. Flat. Just keep 
pushing it down. Looks good. I don't know if this is a little bit of glue there, looks like. There we go. He's looking good there. With the neck, there's no center. There's no ah. Remember I earlier I marked the back of that head. So there's my center line. I actually do have a center line to line up that neck. You want the center of the seam of that neck back here. And it's really weird doing a neck because you gotta kind of have it go. There and then round. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to fold this up for a minute. I want to take and fold this edge in and around. And then I can kind of stitch later too. We'll start with just a little drop of glue. Get that lined up right there on the center. Get my center dot and the center of the neck seam. Get that on there. Get that cool to harden. Is not for me for some reason this is, this is not easy because I'm trying to roll there see I'm trying to roll that in I'll just like to roll that in just kind of roll that in there kind of get a nice Instead of put the neck here, I'm trying to put the neck, the cloth, on that flat part. And then this will come down and I can stitch that in. It'll look nice. I think you can see here now. I'm getting that rolled in. So it's not easy for me. Kind of awkward. Got to come inside, it seems. I'm trying not to get any on this fleece because I want that nice and soft for I can sew. You got hot glue on the cloth. It's hard to sew the cloth. Got to kind of push the needle through the glue, and that's a pain. I'm going, want, I'm going to want to sew this. See, they'll stitch in nice and it should look really pretty. Now, remember, as I said, I want the neck to drop. See how that, I don't know if you can see this. See, the neck is dropping flat. It's hanging straight down. That neck is hanging straight, straight down. And now it's coming unglued. Ah, I didn't let the hot glue set long enough. 
And it's on film, so you know. It's, you see, wow, that guy. Yep, I, I mess up sometimes too. There's not anything I can't fix. And you'll you'll discover that you'll you'll make mistakes. You'll do silly things, but almost everything can be fixed with a puppet. Not now, so we cover our mistakes over with features. <laughs> Suddenly a guy, you have a bad stitch around the nose, oh, we'll give him a mustache. But as I mentioned, I want that neck hanging flat. Draping straight down. So it's going to hang flat and back. And you have to tuck it into the head. Yeah, tuck it right into that head there. Because I want to lay across the back of the mouth. I'm kind of fussing with this. I don't know how good the camera is. I'm kind of fussing with it a little bit off camera, a little bit on camera. I have that going on. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put glue right around the edge of this mouth I'll put glue right on the foam but then I'm going to push the foam flat against the neck so there will be all this extra neck piece let me get this on camera here <laughs> okay. find the thumb I can show you the thumb, I can show you the rest, there we go It's going to lay right across here, right over the thumb hole, for it hangs flat. Push that up. So I'm going to push that neck piece right across, right against the foam here. Out right against the foam here, where it hangs flat in front. Let that hot glue cool so I know it's going to stay. Get holding that. Already lost a little bit there in the back, I got to redo. Right in there. I got this little overhang, got this overhang on the back of the hat that's going to allow me to stitch that in, make it look really nice. Got that glued out of the foam here. Now, it's hanging straight down, straight down. 
And there's only one problem with this. I just put fleece over the thumb hole. Oh no! So what do I do? Start turning this inside out. Find my thumb hole. A thumb tube. There it is. Razor blade. Get that hole started. You can't really see. I can't even see what I'm doing. Cutting a little hole. X like. Just getting right in there, right in that thumb hole. Cutting out a hole. Let's see how that's fitting now. Should be fitting pretty good. Yes, I go right into the thumb tube. There's my finger tubes. I got a nice straight neck all the way down. Just got to stitch this in back to make that pretty. Got to put on my chin piece. Pick up that razor blade if I know where it's at. And where's my chin piece? <clears throat> See how this is going to fit. Beautiful. I'm going to lay the chin piece first across the top of the mouth, and then I'll bring it down, and I can sew it or glue it. Get that mouth wide open. center. Okay, I got, you that, got that little bit of stretch. That's good. Probably heard the lawnmower outside. Go. We're getting that how hot glue down there nice. Got a little bit of glue there I'm gonna nip off. Fleece has a little fuzziness to it, so you get a little hot glue on in the wrong place, it, it nips right off. Doesn't even affect the glue. Look at that, that is looking nice. Now I didn't cut the darts out on the chin piece. Okay, I got a little glue right there in the center. I'm gonna put this back on. I'm gonna stitch this by hand all the way across the bottom. And as I do, I can stretch that out. And if I need to take a dart, but I don't think I will. Stretch it over. I don't think I'm going to, if I do need to take a dart, I can take a dart and sew the dart to. But I didn't cut the darts out. Those don't seem to be necessary on the chin so much. But he's looking good. 
That's getting to be a good looking puppet there. <clears throat> As I said, all I gotta do now is stitch this and stitch this and back. And I got a good looking puppet. His mouth up was really nice. Hi, how are you? Good control. So we'll come back and work on him again. And for now, we'll go off camera and finish putting the fleece on. You can do the same thing. As I said, just you can stitch, stitch it here and back. Stitch the head fleece here to the neck. Or if you're lazy, you can just glue it. And then this, again, you can stitch it. Stitch it into the neck. You shouldn't need to take a dart. You should be able to pull it tight. If you need a dart, you can always stick a dart in so that dart... That's going to be a good looking puppet. We'll get back to that. Thank you. Okay. We're making our body for our puppet now. Here's the pattern that I used. And I drew it out on the foam. One way, flip it over. I need to finish cutting it out. And then it'll come around, make a tube. Now, if, if you want, okay, just a tube makes a pattern, makes a puppet body, just a tube. When you make a tube, you put your neck through, put your arms on. Okay, a, a, a puppet body can be simple, as simple as just a tube of foam, sometimes even a tube of cloth. This is one inch foam, okay, I'm using the one inch foam. I used a half inch on the head, I used half inch on the arms. Use one inch for the body. Now, first thing I need to do is finish cutting this out. Again, I'm using my razor blade. Stick thick foam, so it takes a few cuts to get to the bottom. I don't try to go all the way to the bottom on the first cut. Try to get a nice edge. Power through the blade. And you can use scissors. This stuff will dull scissors very quickly. This razor blade may be ready for the to be thrown away. That razor blade maybe feels a little dull. my old scissors and polish this up a little bit. We have some of those loose pieces there. foam all over the place. Now, next step would be to contact cement, bring this together, have our, have our body, comes down some of the front. But what I'm going to do, is I'm actually going to cover it with fleece before I glue it together. And you know, most I've seen most puppeteers. They'll make the body, then they'll put the fleece on, and you're nipping and stitching. 
I find this gets rid of stitching. Now again, the stretch. Start, watch the stretch. I want the stretch to go across the body. Across the body, like that. I'll bring my stretch across. I got myself some newspaper to protect the foam. All right. So it's just going to go the right way. I will leave a link to the body pattern and other patterns in this video. Light coat of contact cement. I usually use contact cement with the brush on the edges. I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try and use this. I've never actually used that for the edges. But I'm gonna try that. And that's time to check my stretch. Put the fleece on. Oh, look at those pieces. <laughs> pieces of foam. Nice and flat. When I get ready, I can just glue it to the bottom nice and smooth. Or bring down my neck piece and glue it in. Because the neck will go all the way through the body with more movement. Keep that off that edge. Keep that right off that edge there. No seams this way. This is the back of the puppet. I did the pattern. This is the front. Kind of the neck comes down. This is the back. So I'll put it back front to front. So the seam will be in the back. And that way the seam on the fleece will be in the back. Uh, no, no front seam. Looks, it looks pretty. Or no having to wrap it afterwards. To, to avoid the front seam. Wondering how that edge is doing. Is it getting tacky? That's still pretty wet. A nice tacky edge there. And then I can just stick it together, hopefully. I've never used this on my seam, so I'm not guaranteeing it's going to work. I'm going to try. I'm going to try. No, it seems to stick to the paper just fine. It's not ready to stick yet. I'm going to run off camera and I'm going to hit this with the hair dryer. dry. <laughs> now let's see if it's going to stick. So I blue dry the edges. Let's see if they're going to stick now. Oh yeah, that's going to work. It's, I knew it should. Now, I've always used contact cement, so I'm experimenting. <laughs> Even as I'm teaching, I'm experimenting.
Live on the danger danger side there. Live a little dangerously. So live on the wild side, that's what I meant to say. Oh yeah, that's come together nice. There we go. And this fleece will all fold over real good across there. So, once I glue this across, glue the bottom, trim this edge. So I can stitch this, I can stitch this edge here, trim that and stitch it. I may just hot glue it. Contact cement's holding really good there now. This is going to give me a nice little body for my puppet. Bring the head through. So that's the body, real simple. I said the body I use has got the little dip in front for the neck, a little dip on the side for the shoulders, give a little bit of shape. A tube, you could just make a tube and it would work fine. Um, this works. So, that's that. Let's see what's next on our agenda. Enjoyed the video. I hope that it helps you. I'm also making the pattern for sale. If you want to buy the pattern, you can buy the pattern. Um, you can do the eye pattern. But you can make your own pattern. That's the purpose of this video, show you how to make your own. Thank you.